raise your hands if you are ready to finally go to Europe. What I would do right now for a little cheese and wine, even if it was literally from a gas station in France, I would be excited as long as I could eat it in front of the Eiffel Tower. And I come to you today bearing very good news. The European summer is finally among us. And it's time to let your Spanish island hop in, Italian pasta slurpin, Greek flags fly. Okay, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm done. <laughs> Keep in mind that restrictions are changing a lot this year and it's different for every nationality. So be sure to research via your local embassies online to get the most up-to-date information before you travel to Europe. And if you're an American like me, don't forget your vaccination cards at home because I've already had a friend who was on her way to Iceland and she forgot her vaccination card and they would not let her on the plane even though she had a picture of it on her phone. So just be careful and make sure that you're jumping through all of these new regulations and hoops that you have to do to travel these days. Make sure you get your COVID tests within the you know right time frame, 72 hours or, or whatever it may be for the country that you're traveling to. And while we're talking about doing research, I always recommend doing your homework before you get to the country of your destination. So that way you don't have to spend any time sitting in a hotel hotel room trying to figure out what to do or where to go because you have already picked out all of your favorite destinations ahead of time. This is also the most fun kind of homework you could possibly ever do because all you're doing online is looking at these amazing travel photos and picking the best ones where you would want to travel to uh, for yourself. So one quick disclaimer before we jump into this video, I have an incurable American accent and I am gonna be talking about a lot of specific places in this video, so I apologize in advance for my horrible pronunciation. I'm aware of it. I'm working on it. I'm gonna do the best I can, but if I uh, mispronounce the name of your city or your town, I apologize. <laughs> By the way, I am going to be spending a lot of time in Europe in the future creating in-depth travel guides for you, so make sure to subscribe to this channel so that you don't miss out on any information that can help you travel to these amazing places in Europe, especially if you are on a budget. All right, now let's just dive into the crystal clear blue waters of Croatia. When choosing whether to stay in Split or the Limestone Citadel, of Dubrovnik, there are a few things to keep in mind. Split is more centrally located, so it can be a bit more convenient to stay there if you want to see a lot of different places within the country like Kirka and Plitvitz Lakes National Parks. I highly recommend seeing the different beautiful waterfalls and terraces in these parks which are connected by wooden paths. You can even go for a swim in their natural pools. Farther south, Dubrovnik is such a unique city in itself with thick walls surrounding the entire city from the sea, so it's also definitely worth a visit. This was also a popular filming location for productions like the Game of Thrones. There are an abundance of incredible islands to explore in Croatia like Havar, which is a popular party destination, or if you're looking for something more relaxed while exploring the Dalmatian coast, you can sail through the pristine waters of Kortani National Park. Depending on your style of travel, whether you rent a car, take tours or ferries to the surrounding destinations, etc., I would budget between 40 and 100 US dollars per day to travel in Croatia. Montenegro is one of the most underrated road trip destinations in the world. You can drive around serpent-like roads which harbor panoramic views of the sun-drenched fjords. You'll also cross stunning bridges like the Dervika Tara Bridge which stretches over the Tara River and was completed just as World War II was beginning. A trip to Montenegro wouldn't be complete without visiting the Bay of Kotor, which is one of the most beautiful medieval cities in the Balkans. 
You should also venture down the winding Riviera through picturesque towns like Parast and Budva, which truly come alive at night with amazing views and nightlife. Depending on your style of travel, whether you go for a backpacker budget or a more mid-range style of accommodation and activities, I would budget between 35 and 100 US dollars per day to travel in Montenegro. The next stop in the Balkans you should definitely visit is Bosnia and Herzegovina. This is by far one of the most unique places in Europe due to its European and Islamic influences. Finally being able to see the Starry Most for myself, which is the 16th century Ottoman stone bridge in Mostar, was a highlight of my trip here. This bridge was rebuilt after being destroyed during the war in 1993. Since mosques, synagogues, and churches are all in close proximity here, the old bridge holds a lot of symbolic significance as it connects the diverse communities. Depending on when you visit, you could witness or join in on one of the many cliff diving events where people leap from the bridge into the Nevereta River below. Then, only about a 45 minute drive from Mostar is the Kravis Waterfalls. This place is filled with turquoise swimming lagoons surrounded by an oasis of green forests and rushing waterfalls. This is also an awesome destination for kayaking and whitewater rafting in the crystal clear waters of the Tara River. When traveling to Bosnia and Herzegovina, I would recommend budgeting between 40 and 80 US dollars per day to travel in this very affordable country. Bosnia and Herzegovina is one of the lesser visited countries on this list, but of course we cannot forget to add one of the world's most visited countries, Italy. Italy is one of the most diverse countries in all of Europe, which means that if you are looking for adventures in the mountains, leisure and relaxation on the beaches, and if you want to explore some historic cities, Italy has it all. Let's start our trip in the Dolomites, which are located in the South Tyrol region of Northern Italy. If you're on a budget, it is possible to see these places in the Dolomites using public transportation, but in my opinion, it is best explored by car, which you can pick up at any of the nearby airports. There are a few different towns in the region which you can base yourself out of here, so my advice is to research which places you want to visit, then create your own route. It's good to plan this ahead because the driving time between the different destinations can add up quickly, especially since you'll be constantly stopping to take photos around every turn. I recommend the incredible views of the Sicera Mountains and the Tre Cimidi Lavoredo, which is one of the most famous rock formations in all of Europe. On a completely different side of the country, you should take some time to experience the famous Italian coast. Anywhere from Vernazza in Cinque Terre to the north all the way to Positano on the Amalfi Coast in the south, you really cannot go wrong here. And the sky is the limit with how much you can spend on a vacation here, but I can tell you that it is possible to travel in these regions on a backpacker's budget by staying in hostels and eating modest, healthy meals from the local markets rather than restaurants located in the heart of tourism attractions. Beyond visiting the most popular cities like Rome, Venice, Milan, and Florence, you can also venture off the mainland to see some of Italy's incredible Mediterranean islands like Capri or Sicily. Italy is not one of the cheaper countries to travel in Europe and you shouldn't expect to pay much less than 50 or 60 US dollars per day while traveling anywhere in the country. Keep in mind that that doesn't include any additional travel expenses to get to any of these islands. Believe it or not, those were only a fraction of the amazing places in Italy that I wanted to include in this video, and there will be a complete travel guide coming very soon, so don't forget to subscribe if you don't want to miss out on that. And the next place that we are going to be exploring is another beauty in the Balkans, Slovenia. 
It is remarkable that Slovenia, which is tucked between Italy and Croatia, some of Europe's most visited countries, and it already has not been overrun with tourists. In Slovenia, you can find not only a quaint city topped with a medieval castle and serene beaches on the Adriatic Sea, but also my personal favorite, glacier-fed lakes and snow-capped mountains interlaced with neon turquoise rivers. This region is equally suited for honeymooners and backpackers in search of romantic or adventurous experiences in nature. One of my favorite places in Europe is the Socha Valley. You'll want to base yourself in a small town called Tolmin, where you can easily reach the Socha River and Triglav National Park. My favorite hike here was called the Tolmin Gorge. The scenic hike leads you through a pathway below the narrow canyon walls, which look over this extremely blue river water and gives you a glimpse of waterfalls along the way. You can expect to budget somewhere between 40 and 100 US dollars per day here, depending on your travel preferences. Slovenia is one of the lesser visited countries in Europe. I had no idea how much there was to explore there until I found myself traveling through the country while I was visiting every country in Europe. The next country on this list I took for granted for a completely different reason. Most people, especially if you're like me, may have thought that they have seen all of what France has to offer once they visited Paris, but let me tell you, there is so much more to discover in France. France is the most visited country in Europe ahead of Spain and Italy. Paris is one of the most aesthetically pleasing cities on the planet, and it's easy to explore even if you schedule in a few days on a layover before traveling to other places in the country. My personal favorite region is in the south of France, and the French Riviera is home to some of the world's best wine and cuisine. Renting a boat on the coast of Nice or Cannes is one of the best ways to see the landscapes. There is also a unique hiking trail around Antibes, which offers views of the rugged coastline and the billionaire's mansions perched along the shores. Another aspect of France that is worth exploring is their massive collection of castles. There are countless castles spread throughout the country in places like the Loire Valley and Bordeaux, but the most significant will always be the extravagant Palace of Versailles. The 17th century palace stretches nearly 2,000 acres and contains 60,000 pieces of artwork today. In my opinion, the most unique castle is Mont Saint Michel, which is located only a few hours by train outside of Paris. The island the island is one kilometer off the coast and it's now connected to the mainland by road, so it's possible to access the island at any time of the year. I recommend staying overnight in the small village below the abbey in a local bed and breakfast so you have plenty of time to explore the interconnected web of cobblestone streets that date back over a thousand years. France can be one of the most expensive countries in the world to travel, and I would recommend to budget between 60 and 200 US dollars per day. For our next destination, let's just hop over the border to Spain. But let's be honest, Spain has its amazing beaches, its unique cities, its jaw-dropping architecture, its epic nightlife, but we all know the real reason why people visit Spain. The food! <laughs> You have to experience tapas in Spain at least once in your life. And if you find yourself in Barcelona, you have to stop at the La Boqueria Market. Inside the market, you'll find an assortment of mouth-watering cured meats hung from the small shops on both sides of the walkway. The smell of fresh fish permeated the air and when combined with the 
intricate displays of fruit and vegetables. This led to a complete sensory overload in the best way possible. The packed market offered the best Mediterranean cuisine I had ever tasted with abundant fresh and organic whole foods as well as food stalls where you could try all of the different traditional dishes. My favorite Spanish dish is called paella and it's from Valencia. It's a sargon infused rice dish that can have meat, fish, seafood or vegetables. Another bucket list experience to have in Europe is visiting a few of the idyllic islands off the coast of Spain. The two I would recommend the most are Ibiza if you're looking for some fun party culture with a scenic backdrop and Mallorca if you're looking for somewhere even more peaceful. I recommend looking into flights to these destinations at least a few days in advance and if you're lucky you'll be able to find round trip tickets for less than $100. The next incredible place you should visit during the summer is Iceland. Now keep in mind that Iceland is significantly more expensive during the summertime because it is such a beautiful time to be there and thus the demand is a lot higher. If you're looking to save some money I would recommend maybe traveling during a shoulder season or even the off season because everything from the plane ticket to the rental vehicle will be a bit more affordable and trust me you definitely want to rent a van or an RV while traveling around Iceland because it's by far the best way to see the country. A great route to take if you only have a short time in Iceland is the Golden Circle which can be done in two days and you'll be able to see waterfalls like Gullfoss and Brúarfoss and the Heikadular geysers which are a testament to how unique it is to be on a volcanic island in the middle of the Arctic Circle. If you have seven to ten days or more I highly recommend taking an epic road trip around the Ring Road. Road. As you can tell by the name, the Ring Road takes you around the entire island and you'll want to stop countless times along the route to see different destinations like the Glacier Lagoon and Diamond Beach. My favorite thing to do in Iceland is to soak in the natural hot springs or as they call them, hot pots, which are scattered throughout the countryside. Another interesting aspect of traveling in the north of Iceland is that there are some nights where the sun never sets. It was my first time experiencing over 24 hours of daylight which left so much more time to see the rolling fjords in the northern region. Since the cost of travel in Iceland can vary so greatly depending on the season, I would budget between $75 and $175 per day in Iceland. If possible, I suggest bringing some friends along so it's possible to split the price of the rental vehicle amongst yourselves. Now let's fly back across the continent of Europe to one of my favorite countries, Germany. Traveling to Germany during Oktoberfest is still very high on my bucket list, but even without the festivities, Munich is one of my favorite places within the country, not only because it's home to the world's best beer gardens, but because it's the heart of Bavaria. There are so many fun day trips you can take from Munich into the Bavarian Alps, one of my favorite being to see Neuschwanstein Castle. This castle was the inspiration for Disneyland's Sleeping Beauty's castle and traveling here definitely feels like stepping into a fairy tale. It's not surprising that 1.4 million people visit this castle every year so you can expect some crowds but it's definitely worth it for these 360 degree views of the Bavarian Alps. You can also opt to take a biking trip around the nearby lake which was supposedly the inspiration for Swan Lake. You can ride a bicycle around perfectly maintained trails that stretch all the way into the surrounding valleys and other castles. Another aspect of Germany to explore is the abundance of small 
picturesque village towns. Rothenburg was definitely one of my favorites and it perfectly captures the side of Germany you imagine when you're a little kid with the cobblestone streets and the painted timber framing. While traveling around this beautiful country, I would suggest budgeting between 50 and 150 US dollars per day depending on your travel preferences. Also, be sure not to forget to try the sausage and sauerkraut when you're traveling in these tiny German towns. It's by far one of the most satisfying meals I've ever had with a good pint of beer after exploring all day. Our next stop is Greece and there are plenty of things to do on mainland Greece but let's be honest, during the summer the best thing to do in this country is to go island hopping. My favorite experience in Greece was renting a boat on Zakynthos and going around the entire island. Shipwreck Beach on Zakynthos is one of the most famous beaches in the world now thanks to Instagram, but there were so many other amazing beaches and coves around the island, I highly recommend spending a few days there. The other popular islands include Mykonos, Santorini, Milos, Ios, and more. I personally enjoy going to places that aren't jam-packed with tourists, so I would suggest going to some of these slightly less populated islands during the peak season. Greece is a budget-friendly destination, but the prices for accommodation, tours, transportation, etc. can vary greatly depending on the season and which islands you are traveling around. So I would recommend budgeting between 50 and 100 US dollars per day. Our next country, Sweden, which is up in Scandinavia, is one country that I actually would recommend traveling to during peak season because, I'm sorry Sweden, but you are a little bit hard to love during the winter time, other than Swedish Christmas, of course, which is by far the most adorable Christmas celebration ever. <laughs> If I had to describe the energy in Sweden during the summer months in one word, it would be gratitude. The summer is such a special time for the locals because Swedes experience very dark, cold winters. So every day that is warm and sunny is a day to be celebrated. You can also truly appreciate how colorful the city of Stockholm really is when the sun is out and it's also one of the most hip and trendy cities in the world. One of my friends once told me that the most underdressed they've ever felt was going to a festival in Stockholm. My favorite place in Sweden is the Stockholm Archipelago. You can visit a variety of islands like Gotland and Samham, which are connected by ferries. No trip to Sweden is complete without heating up in a sauna before doing a cold plunge into the Baltic Sea or in any of the pristine lakes in the surrounding countryside. But make sure to pack your bug spray because once you get out of the city, there are ferocious mosquitoes during the summer months. Scandinavia in general is not the cheapest place in the world and Sweden is no exception. On a modest budget, I would expect to spend somewhere between $75 and $200 per day in Sweden. After exploring the islands in Stockholm's archipelago, let's head over to our last destination, Turkey. I also recently made a video about my seven day road trip to all of the most popular destinations in Turkey and I will link that in the description below. Most trips to Turkey start in Istanbul, which is a city that connects the continents of Europe and Asia together. The European side of the city is where tourists usually end up staying since it's where the largest attractions like the Grand Bazaar and the Blue Mosque are located. I also recommend visiting the area around the Galata Tower, which is one of the most iconic landmarks in Istanbul, and there's plenty of unique restaurants and shops to visit. Turkey can be cheap or expensive depending on what you want to do and how deeply you want to travel throughout the country. A hot air balloon ride, for example, costs around 
two to three hundred US dollars. But the country has a lot of other bucket list worthy items that cost way less and if you plan your route well, it can be very easy to travel through Turkey on a budget. The Pamukkale Thermal Pools were such a unique stop on the road trip and I would definitely recommend it. The white travertine terraces were formed by calcium deposits which gave this place its nickname, the Cotton Castle. Turkey can be a very budget friendly country and I recommend budgeting between 40 and 80 US dollars per day, although the accommodation can be on the more expensive side in Istanbul. Wow, this video has made me so excited for my own upcoming Europe trip, which I'm so freaking excited about. And if you want to stay up to date on my daily adventures, the best place to do that is over on Instagram at Lexi Limitless. I post tons of stories every day while I'm traveling. Thank you guys so much again for watching this video. If you have any questions that might help you on your own travels, or if you want to see more videos like this, comment down below and don't forget to subscribe to join the Limitless Army so you don't miss any of the adventures. Until next time, guys, keep pushing your limits.